We are often asked, is the keto diet good for nerve recovery? Well, this is a great question considering the increasing popularity of the keto diet. Google Trends reports 25.4 million unique searches for information on the ketogenic diet, making it the most Google diet in the US. So today, we're diving deep into the keto universe in a much different way. We'll uncover what type of impact it may have on neuroprotection, glucose metabolism, pain reduction, and the gut microbiome. So grab a pen and paper because we're about to get granular. Coming up. Health Warriors, Dr. M here. If you're ready to conquer your peripheral neuropathy and start living again, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified as soon as we publish new content. Let's get ready to dive in. I think it's fairly safe to assume that almost everyone has heard the term keto diet, even if you're not quite sure what it is. In fact, stats show there's been a rapid increase in the keto food industry. The keto diet market, which was valued at $9.57 billion in 2019, has grown to over $11 billion, that's billion with a B, $11 billion in 2023. So just to make sure everyone is caught up to speed, I'll do a very brief summary. The ketogenic diet is a low carbohydrate, high fat diet that shifts your body's primary source of fuel from carbohydrates to fats. Following a ketogenic diet means that you'll significantly reduce your carbohydrate intake to only 10% of your dietary calories. And we're primarily talking about complex carbs like starches, grains, and high sugar fruits or vegetables, along with the elimination of processed foods. Now, your protein intake will make up 20% of your diet and healthy fats will make up the remaining 70% of your diet. Now, believe it or not, the keto diet isn't the new kid on the block. This diet was first developed back in 1921 by Dr. Russell Wilder from the Mayo Clinic. He proposed that this restricted carbohydrate diet would be a good line of treatment to control epileptic seizures. And after much research, he was correct. The ketogenic diet was predominantly used in the treatment of childhood epilepsy with great success but it fell by the wayside as the pharmaceutical companies developed more drugs to treat epilepsy. Now, it wasn't until the 1970s when Dr. Atkins reintroduced this diet again, but this time it was for the purpose of losing weight. For this video, I'll focus on how this diet impacts your nervous system and other systems in your body. So, Let's start with the basics. The ketogenic diet forces the body to enter a state of ketosis, which is a metabolic state where the body burns fat for energy instead of glucose. Scientists say that ketones are an excellent fuel source, better than glucose, particularly for the brain and the rest of the nervous system because they produce less free radicals than glucose when they're broken down by the body. Now, here's where it gets exciting, gang. Research reveals that the ketogenic diet offers neuroprotective effects for both the central and the peripheral nervous systems. Gang, we're talking about protection for your brain, spinal cord, and all of the other nerves in your body. In fact, studies have shown that ketones can protect nerve cells from damage and degeneration. In many neurodegenerative diseases and neuroinflammatory diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, optic neuritis, spinal cerebellar ataxia, ALS, and Huntington's disease, it's very common for glucose metabolism to be impaired. So what that means for the brain, spinal cord, and the peripheral nerves is that they'll be deprived of their main fuel source, glucose, which will lead to poor nerve communication, nerve dysfunction, impairment, and nerve damage. One of the major causes linked with peripheral nerve damage and damage to the neurons of the brain is oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. Well, research has shown that the ketogenic diet reduces oxidation and inflammation in the brain and peripheral nerves. In addition, ketones promote the production of myelin, the protective coat around the nerves that aids in nerve signal transmission. 
As exciting as this, as this information is, especially if you're a geek like me, it gets deeper than this. So let's look at the role of ketosis in mitochondrial function. In our video, The Miracle Molecule, we discuss the important role of the mitochondria for nerve cell health and function. If you haven't seen this video, you'll definitely want to watch it, so I'll leave a link for you down below. The function of your mitochondria is critical to the health of your nerves. Let me explain how they work. Think of mitochondria as the powerhouses of your cells, like a big generator that produces electricity in a factory. Now, imagine your body is the busy factory that needs lots of energy to keep it running smoothly. But it's summertime, it's super hot, and you live in a state that has a lot of rolling blackouts, making it imperative to keep that generator running smoothly so the factory doesn't shut down. Well, you have molecules called NAD plus and NADH that act like tiny workers in that factory. And their role is to keep the generator operating so the factory doesn't shut down. They do this by carrying metabolized food particles into the mitochondria, where they're used to make ATP, a powerful kind of energy or fuel required by every cell for normal function. Now, your nerve cells are completely dependent on ATP to maintain proper function. Research suggests that elevated ketones may improve mitochondrial function because they enhance the availability of NAD plus and NADH for the mitochondria, resulting in increased ATP production for your nerves. Now, getting back to our analogy, Ketones are like the supervisor, supervisors in the plant, making sure that the workers NAD plus and NADH are maintaining the generator and not goofing off. Studies have suggested that ketones may promote nerve regeneration and repair by activating certain pathways involved in nerve growth and survival. This regeneration can help restore sensory function, which is important in small fiber neuropathy, and it may assist with reducing nerve pain associated with peripheral neuropathy. It may also enhance cognitive function and endurance. Next, let's take a look at how the ketogenic diet may reduce pain. Scientists have seen that chronic pain conditions, including peripheral neuropathy, have been helped with the ketogenic diet. Although the exact mechanisms behind how the keto diet may inhibit pain aren't fully understood, medical researchers have proposed several theories based on scientific research. The first theory is reduced inflammation. The production of ketone bodies has been shown to reduce inflammation in the body, which is the cause of many pain syndromes from arthritis to neuropathic pain and many others. By reducing inflammation, nerve pain may be reduced. Next, scientists say that neuropathic pain may be alleviated by the keto diet due to its effect on brain neurotransmitters like GABA and glutamate. Glutamate makes nerve cells more excitable. So when there's too much glutamate, the nerves begin to fire uncontrollably or constantly, creating more pain signals. However, GABA calms the nerves, decreasing the pain signals. The keto diet increases the activity of GABA and decreases glutamate, diminishing pain signals. Believe it or not, this isn't just important for pain control. It's equally important for people with any neurological disorder. High levels of glutamate and low levels of GABA are commonly found in people suffering from neurodegenerative diseases. Now, here's an alarming statistic. Did you know that one third of all diabetics will develop peripheral neuropathy. And people with prediabetes can develop peripheral nerve damage long before full-blown diabetes sets in. Well, the ketogenic diet plays an essential role in reducing chronically elevated glucose levels and insulin resistance. Remember, elevated blood, blood sugar creates an enormous amount of inflammation and free radical damage directly to the nerves, and also to the blood vessels supplying the nerves with oxygen and other nutrients. The end result is nerve damage. By relying on fat for fuel and reducing carbohydrate intake, the ketogenic diet helps stabilize blood glucose levels and decreases insulin resistance. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's been quite a bit of talk about how the keto diet impairs the gut microbiome. So let's look at this. 
Many researchers state that this diet limits the diversity of the microbiome, so therefore it's unsafe for a healthy gut. This conclusion was drawn because in a short-term study conducted, scientists noticed that within the first few weeks of switching to a ketogenic diet, the diversity of the gut microbiome was decreased. Now, here are the scientific facts. Scientists are correct. Within the first few weeks of following a keto diet, the microbiome diversity decreases, and that would make complete sense. After all, you're no longer eating tons of carbs or starches, so the bacteria that would consume the starches won't proliferate or flourish, which does sound like a bad thing. But here's the missing link. Long-term clinical research revealed that after 12 weeks of staying on a keto diet, the diversity of the gut bacteria then rebounds and the diversity once again increases. And by a six month period or less, your microbiome is stabilized and healthy. It simply takes time for the bacteria to evolve and adapt to the new healthy conditions. In fact, the research revealed that the keto diet promoted beneficial bacteria like Acromantia mucinophila and Parabacteroides, which have been linked with reduced rates of epileptic seizures. Not to mention these two bacteria play a role in modulating the neurotransmitters GABA and glutamate, critical for the health of the nervous system. Now, I always want to make sure you have a completely unbiased picture. Despite keto's many benefits, it can come with certain nutritional limitations and drawbacks. So let's examine those. The ketogenic diet can result in nutritional deficiencies, which occurs more frequently than you might have imagined. Here's why. Many people don't follow a healthy ketogenic diet. What this means is that they consume tons of high fat and not all of it is necessarily good fat. Many times they're taking in poor quality to downright bad fats like omega-6 fats from seed oils or trans fats. They also consume quite a bit of protein and again the quality of protein is questionable and very little vegetables or allowed fruit. Even though this method will achieve ketosis, it will definitely lead to vitamin, mineral, and antioxidant deficiencies. Foods like blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, kale, spinach, and red cabbage have some of the highest antioxidant profiles. Now, you heard me mention earlier the term healthy ketogenic diet. This means you're following all of the keto parameters with high quality fats and protein, but you include at least five cups or more of keto allowed fruits or vegetables per day, which will still keep you under the 50 grams of net carbs. This will supply you with critical nutrients like vitamins B and C or minerals and trace minerals like magnesium, phosphorus, selenium, and so many others, all of which are important for nerve health. Following a healthy keto diet packed with allowed fruits and vegetables helps prevent nutritional deficiencies from developing. Well, health warriors, that's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed journeying through the keto universe, exploring its impact on nerve recovery, metabolism, pain reduction, and even the gut microbiome. Now, before you go, we'd like to ask for your help. It's our mission to help as many neuropathy sufferers as possible, and we need your help to do this. Please take a moment to like this video and share it with others. It really helps our YouTube algorithm so we can reach more people. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notified about our weekly videos. With your help, we can develop a neuropathy-free world. Until next time, my dear friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. It simply takes... <laughs> he loves being on camera. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. You want a treat? There you go. Good girl. This is Blossom. She's a bit more camera shy. Huh, baby?